Good morning everyone. In today's video, I will continue uh, uh, to answer the question why we need to learn Dynamo and uh, in the second part of that uh, uh, of that video, I will continue uh, explaining the terms and uh, sorry, explain the uh, the concept uh, behind why we need uh, uh, Dynamo in, in the architecture and in the AEC industry. And uh, previously we spoke about the you know, urban design architectural form. Uh, space for planning, facade design, structure, and I, I believe last time, last time we stopped here, right with the structure design. And just to continue from where we stopped last time. And uh, here in the, the next point we have one of the most famous use for the dynamo is uh, clash detection in MEP design in an MEP design of course you can you know it's, it's actually can design the roads and the paths for the pipes and ducts that can run instead of run them manually and calculate actually the shortest distance and the best uh, you know uh, the, the quality the speed of air, anything it can be controlled when programmed within this application. Uh, some sample images I get from uh, the internet regarding this topic. Uh, another use for it is energy analysis. There's lots of plugins as goes with the Grasshopper. You can go and uh, you know search for that. It's also, you know, uh, lots of uh, plugins you can install uh, in uh, Dynamo to get, uh, I think this one is Honeybee, uh, to get the simulation, uh, daylight simulation, energy analysis and everything. And instead of run that in, you know, a dedicated software, it can get you, as you can see this, uh, it's for uh, Mr. Saeed here, that's the channel. And again, the references and the work for I show is just belong to those guys, great guys who actually thankfully share their knowledge. I'm here just to point out the good example of a successful example of what we can have and how we can illustrate that for those who want to learn why we need Dynamo. Anyway, so that's the energy analysis. I believe this is a daylight uh, calculation. And again, there's lots of uh, plugins inside Dynamo that can ease the pain of, you know, get an accurate result of uh, you know the energy analysis of your building uh what else uh yeah interior design i got i get in the you know at ajman university as the same question because we have architecture department and interior design and i get lots of students asking is it you know applicable in the interior design and the answer is really big yes and as you can see all you know if you apply it with uh, apply it with the concept of uh, you know uh, complex and organic architecture yes it can create and also if you apply it for the best space and best furniture distribution also you can get that uh, dynamo with a big help uh, I find that in, uh, in this link uh, soul food uh, lots of interior shots made by this very nice PowerPoint presentation Lots of, uh, you know, uh, exterior and interior actually images made by, and lots of concepts regarding using uh, parametric architecture, dynamo and grasshopper, uh, specifically in, in uh, you know, uh, in interior design, as you can see in this slide. This is a presentation more than exterior and interior, not interior by itself, but I, I just took the, uh, you know, the honor to take some pictures from this great collection for this person. Anyway. Uh, again, that's one of the great uh, or good example. Uh, that so answer is yes, not only for architect but also for interior designer, for furniture and industrial design. Yes, again, and I think this one for Zuhar Hadid. Uh, you, I bet you, I bet that you saw lots of, you know, street furniture going that way, and you can manufacture that easily with a laser cutter. Uh, it's a vertical slicer techniques. Um, I, I bet if if I, I if I have enough time within this course, I will try to show you how to make one of those. And um, I also was making something a bit crazier here. It's also um, a, a chair where you can control, uh, you know, the slope and the uh, the dimension of it, and then a, a random boxes just goes downward. I saw that also. This saw this geometry on the internet, and I tried to you know get 
my head around how to make it so yeah you can make furniture any type of furniture and of course I'm, I'm making here just the, the, the crazy nice design of it uh, more than the organic and the crazy design but you can use it as you know kitchen design uh, also use it for optimization and any type of more functional uh, part of uh, using it not just for the geometry what else uh, we have also uh, yeah annotation annotation is now we're getting a bit out of you know where or what type of uh, you know fields we have now that's more like uh, the function dynamo can do and I will try after give you a good introduction about the user interface maybe next lecture I'll try to get you to see another way of you know categorization instead of where we need to, on why we need to use dynamo but rather than what uh, are the main field inside dynamo annotation will be you know a common area between but for making annotation yes and that's a little bit uh, you know a crazy job that all of us architect interior designer uh, are really get sick of it which is you have a big plan and you know um, it's really annoying to apply immediate dimension for it and I think this um, this is a good example of you can you know immediately uh, select uh, the grid or select the architectural element and then apply as you can see an immediate dimension for it it can apply as you can see in a grid a very basic grid and I it even goes for more complex geometry you can add that for the entire plan that's for the again from this channel uh, Yong Sung and uh, have a look at that in, in, in more detail there's lots of other examples also on the internet and it gets more complex and more complicated geometries where you can get add to add an entire dimension for the whole uh, plan with a couple of clicks instead of doing that that might take for a big plan even an entire or more than one day to do it you can do it here in a couple of clicks uh, yep uh, that's another one it's an automation and uh, let's see yep so an automatic check and automation uh, again that will be also mentioned in uh, the field or the part that you have to study inside Dynamo I'm gonna categorize it differently so I can ease the pain to teach you how to deal with Dynamo another field you can work with it is the automatic check and annotation one of those is uh, this very simple a node that I designed uh, that can check you know if you have like a a big plan or a small plan it's more worthy of course with the big plans where you have you know like a hundred or thousands of doors and windows and you want to see if those windows are actually complies with you know a specific code regulation maybe it's less than one meter it can circulate you know uh, it can circle the, the you know the doors that doesn't apply or the windows that doesn't apply to the codes or to the building regulation and you can even replace that automatically if you have one door or if you have a thousand door uh, it doesn't matter it's uh, it's just a matter of a couple of clicks and dynamo can circle you know the, uh, the um, you know you, as you can see here it can circle for you which door are you know doesn't apply with the condition it's less than one meter maybe and you can run another function with it or you can even design something else that make it you know immediate replace this door or these doors into a correct one so imagine yourself checking on a big document that have hundred maybe a, a hospital plan that have hundreds of plan hundreds of doors and you gotta go and check each one of them is it comply specifically if you want to you know run the last check or last minute check where you have to understand uh, that those doors comply with the code or not uh, what else uh, of course fire regress that's one of the painful thing when you have you know each you never know, big plan and you want to know uh, is it apply to the code that have uh, enough length uh, to uh, get away from the fire if it's happened and yes, it's, I think it's been added in Revit 2020 as a, a built-in. Uh, but before you have to program it, you know, and inside each point inside the building or from the door, depending on the code you have and how you can get access to the fire 
uh, escape areas, and that can be done automatically. It even can draw you the path and the suggested path to go through that. Uh, of course, it can make an automatic calculation for the best built area against the entire land area. Uh, I believe we spoke about that in the previous example, but yes, it's part of the automation. Uh, clash detection, uh, one of the best, of course. Uh, there is lots of, uh, I think, Navis work in Autodesk also can uh, help do this, but uh, also you can do that as a BIM manager uh, to see where the MEP might, you know, uh, clash and occupies the same place with, uh, with the plumbing and it can be a nightmare if you have a, such a thing to, do, to decide and to know uh, which, which part actually is, you know, clashing and you can get a result similar to this one and it can even suggest for you how to uh, uh, I, I just, you know, again, that's the reference if you want to have a look and again, I'm mentioning that at the title of the references and you can see how it can go over and suggest something around that you know, in order to get rid of this clash uh, the clash or possible the clash between uh, different fields like mechanical and uh, plumbing and what else uh, that's the for the clash detection and um, again uh, I think that's that's it uh, um, before we go, before I finish, it's just for, again, for interior design, you have, you know, such a cases like, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to design ceiling and how you can make those, uh, you know, uh, ceiling fixture fixed uh, into a, a false ceiling that we have in here and how to design each point. Uh, you can design the curve itself and, you know, each curve you have, it's actually, you know, connected with a pen and then fixed to the ceiling itself. Uh, you can just design the face, uh, the surface, sorry, and then a dynamo can tell you the length of each cable and where to place it in a grid of points based on that ceiling. Uh, lots of, uh, guys, lots of cases in, in, in different fields. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can, you know, work your head around uh, different topics and different, uh, you know, uh, different usage for this kind of application. But again, it depends uh, on your own imagination. There is no limits in this application. And I, I, I really wish that this two-part video uh, helped you to answer the question, who actually need to learn it and why we need to learn it whether we are an urban designer, uh, planner, uh, structural designer, interior design, industrial designer, architects, what type of architect. There is uh, also conceptualization. I did not talk about conceptualization and how to, to make the dynamo, you know, suggest for you. If you need a specific, uh, is, is the building, if the plan you have going to be fit uh, to build a tower in it or a, a shopping mall and it doesn't, it complies again with the code. Lots of other examples that I can get my head all around them, uh, but I wish really that video might help you to get a, a quick start to understand if you need to continue learning Dynamo or no. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope uh, that you help me with, uh, you know, uh, sharing and commenting and give me any kind of feedback that you might think to help uh, all of our humble small community to develop more and more. Thank you very much for those who actually shared the content of the previous video on their social media. I appreciate your uh, endless support. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.